So I'm going to sit. You sit too with me for a second. Sure. Um, what do you do with your life? With my life? Okay. Um, so we create a technology that lets you feel things in the air without actually touching anything. So we use that either for controlling devices without touching them or going into immersive realities and being able to reach out and feel things that you can see or feel things that don't actually exist in the real world. Right. right. So that, uh, let's, let's explain how ultrasound works into that. Because in my mind, ultrasound is what happens when you have a baby in your belly. Yeah. And you get your ultrasound and you're like, oh, heartbeat, it's a girl, it's a boy. Like, wh how does that factor in technology-wise right, for all sure. the, the nerds out here? So ultrasound is just sound waves that's of a higher frequency, so too high for you to hear. Uh, and we have a collection of speakers, and what we do is we trigger all of the sound, uh, all of the speakers with specific time differences, so the sound waves arrive at the same point at the same time and that sort of add together. And there's enough force there to actually push on the surface of your skin, and we control that to create a vibration on your skin and then sort of manipulate it into any shape or, um, or sort of object that you're, you're interacting with. So this makes sense, obviously, in VR. And you know, all the experts are like, oh, VR is going to be mainstream in three to five years, every three to five years. And it's like been <laughs> 12 years now. And we're all like, OK, cool. Who has a, a VR headset? Raise your hand. OK. Losers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so <laughs> this makes sense in the context of VR, obviously. Yeah. Right? Tell me other use cases. So um, we're in Germany, so I have to mention automotive. Uh, that's a really big application for us where you'll be able to um, drive the car, hold your hand out over the center console, and have controls projected onto your hand so you can um, interact, feel button clicks, feel sliders. And the, the real idea there is that you're able to um, operate some commonly used features of the center console without taking your eyes off the road. So it uh, reduces driver distraction. And another? Um, so uh, another would be um, augmented reality in the workplace. Uh, augmented reality headsets are, are possibly slightly behind virtual reality, but getting there pretty quick. Um, and in the future, nobody's going to have monitors on their desktop or, or sort of screens flapped up on their, uh, on their laptops. You'll actually be able to create any sort of screen arrangement you like in the AR headset. And actually, you don't even need to have some flat display. You can have the content in three dimensions. Um, so in those cases, we allow you to actually directly touch, feel, and interact with the content. And what makes that like necessarily more? V I guess for like the fields of design, that's more viable than something like a voice chip or like an in-ear, right? Yeah, I think um, I think voice is going to be a really key part of how we interact with devices in the future. But there are fundamentally a number of things you don't want to do with voice, um, and those you're going to want to reach out and touch. I think a lot of um, complex interactions you can often get about 90% of the way there with voice, but that last 10% you kind of want to um, to do with touch. Uh, one good example is sort of searching big data sets. So if you um, wanted to bring up all of the TechCrunch tweets from Disrupt in San Francisco, you can just ask for that, and it will filter that. You could filter down with a couple of voice commands. And then when you've got the last few in front of you and you want to pick that one, you're going to want to reach out and touch it, grab it, or interact with it, not, say, the bottom right one, two from the left. So I think a lot of uh, interactions in the future, you'll see that sort of 90% with voice and final 10% with actually touching and interacting. OK, well, I mean, do you want to show us how it works? Do you, uh, have, sure. you have like a little song and dance? I think you do. Yeah, so this is, um, uh, this is a slightly different application. Uh, this is um, reimagining posters. So um, you've had static posters for years. Um, they jazzed them up and put them on screens and animated them uh, in an attempt to try and get, get people's attention. I don't think it's massively worked, but one of the key reasons is you, you walk past posters and you largely ignore them. You don't have any interaction with them. So what we're doing is a, enabling you to actually reach out and interact with the posters, play a little game, or just get some kind of, of contact and interaction. Um, so we have one here to try. Yeah, let's, let's do it. You go first. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't want to break anything. <laughs> so in this case, you can just sort of walk up to the poster and hold your hand out. Um, and I have to be careful what I say because of trademarks, but you can feel the 
the stuff that you feel what in Star Wars. What are you trying Wars. to say? <laughs> I don't know. I'm unfamiliar. So have a go. Have okay. a go. So is that all I can do? Can I? So in this poster, the idea is that you just. Uh, it'll be a, a passing interaction. You can walk up and sort of push your hands out and have some kind of interaction with it. Um, how, how much cancer, though? How much cancer? Because I can feel it. Actually, like, we should put that on our on our uh, uh, on our marketing. Zero cancer. Zero cancer. Zero You're cancer. sure? Positive. Really? Who does anybody re want to see what this feels like? Josh, uh, the young lady in the gray, um, and you too. Come on. Yeah. Yep, sure. That's nope. That's it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, how do you make money off of this while we have some people come up and check it out? So generally, for most interact uh, most applications, we license the technology. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can. <laughs> um, we it's license bizarre. it, so we won't be producing products ourselves. It'll be being integrated into um, cars, consumer electronics, uh, appliances, um, your future computer, VR interfaces. Um, something like this, it would be more of a... Uh, well, we've got like, just people who joined on their own. Stream. <laughs> Let's stand in front of you guys. Thank you for creating a line in front of us. Um, so, yeah, it's weird. It feels like you're um, getting cancer. Like That's the only way I can put it. <laughs> <laughs> like it feels unnatural, but in a great way. Like you know, <laughs> like our conversation right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so okay, no, seriously, it's just because I'm hungover and he's hungover. It's not. There's no other reason. Um, you were talking about how you make money. Yes. And I stopped listening because people started walking. So basically, um, we'll license the technology to go into devices, take royalties. Um, something like this. Actually, uh, you tend to pay per poster. So if somebody wants to roll them out. Whoever owns the uh, the poster screens in cinemas or shopping malls would um, pay a license to take out per poster and installation, and then off they go. Yeah. So what I feel like this feels a li and without like offending you, and let's not turn our back to mm -hmm. the audience. It feels a little bit crude. Like, at what point do you get? For example, if I'm playing in VR and I need to, and I'm playing a first-person shooter. Am I holding the feeling of a no. gun, so, or is it always just this kind of like blast of of touch? Sure. So the so what we can't do is actually make you your hand sort of stop. So we can't make you hold complicated objects like guns or um, or swords, that kind of thing. Um, but we can let you reach out and touch and interact with objects. So uh, in that case, you can feel the shape of the object. Um, we're early stages, but we're getting there and starting to be able to feel the texture of objects as well. So um, what, you, what we create on the hand is a vibration. So for this, because we're just creating some kind of force on your hand, uh, we're just kind of creating a blast that moves across your hand. But actually, we can change what you're feeling 16,000 times a second. So if you're moving your hands across a surface, we can change the vibration that your hand's feeling really, really quickly as you move across. And that is um, one of the major components of how you actually feel texture. And then when you're talking about the, not just like right now, you're licensing this technology, royalties, et cetera, but yeah. when we think like 10 years in the future, and this is actually something that we need because we're using our voice, we're using AR and VR, and you just totally lose anything tactile. Yeah. Then what is the monetization? Like, tell me the phase three monetization platform, right? Because like you have to eventually say like, oh, all businesses want this touch interface and get rid of their screens. What does that look like? Um, so I think right now we're really focused on, ultimately, there's going to be some piece of hardware. Somebody's going to manufacture that hardware. Um, we're planning on it not being us. Um, it could be any computer manufacturer, uh, any hardware manufacturer. And, and that's where our, uh, our revenue stream comes from. And then last question is, what to you is the greatest challenge? Like, are you in the same boat as all the folks who are making games and movies for VR, and VR just never really took off, took off except for with the six people who raised their hand? <laughs> um, yeah, I think we, we have some of the similar challenges to the rest of the sort of VR industry in that you have this chicken and egg situation, right? So people aren't going to make content until there's the, the install base, and there's not going to be the install base until there's the content, and you somehow have to sort of uh, have to break that egg. Um, one of the really key things for us to, to address that is making tools that make adding haptics to other content really, really easy. So in most VR environments, actually, the information we need to get 
what it feels like when you're picking things up, moving them around, casting magic spells, whatever you're doing. Uh, we can get that information out of the uh, out of the physics engine. So our software can actually enable you, if you're creating a VR game or an application in Unity, um, to just click a button saying haptics on, and we'll auto-generate all of the haptics for your whole uh, whole VR experience for when you're picking things up and moving them around. So, yeah. Amazing. Who's into it? <laughs> awesome. That's more well, than you VR won. Headsets, yeah, so. <laughs> I like trying to get people to laugh about Bitcoin. So you win. Hey. Disrupt. Um, that's enough for all. Please, big round of applause for Tom. Great Thank job. You. you can go ahead and Thanks. exit.